microphone and we'll bring you into the conversation. Love to hear what's on your mind. I, I would like to know, um, are you proposing Medicare for all? Because that's really what I would like to see. I talk to people from all over the, the world and unfortunately, um, they're grateful that they live where they live in other countries because if they were in America, they'd be dead. Yeah. I don't think the second mic is working, whoever's got the, the board. Um, you got it on? So for those who didn't hear the question, how, how do we get to universal guaranteed high quality health care? Um, there's a proposal called Medicare for America. It was written by two women with whom I used to serve from Illinois and from Connecticut. Uh, Jan Schakowsky, Rosa DeLauro. This is what it does. For the tens of millions of our fellow Americans who have no coverage or insurance at all, they may be among those who get arrested on purpose to go to the county jail to have their schizophrenia or bipolar disorder treated. In some states like mine, the county jail system is the largest provider of mental health care services today. They are enrolled in Medicare going forward so they can afford their treatment, their care, see a primary care provider, go to a psychologist or psychiatrist, be well enough to live to their full potential to go to school the next day, to go to work, to pay taxes, to shoulder their fair share of the burden so that it rests a little bit lighter on everybody else. Those who have employer-sponsored insurance and like it, as tens of millions of our fellow Americans do, are able to keep it if it works for them and their families. If that employer-sponsored insurance is insufficient because you cannot afford your premiums or your co-pays or the deductible is too large to bridge, then you're able, you're free to elect to go over to Medicare. It's not an inexpensive proposition, but it's a lot less cheaper than the way that we pay or fail to pay for healthcare today. And it's the surest, quickest path to get us to universal, guaranteed, high quality care. Thank you for asking, appreciate it. Hey, okay, right here to your right. Thank you very much, Congressman O'Rourke, for being here in Atlantic. Uh, we really appreciate that. My name is Brad. I'm originally from Atlantic. I currently live in Des Moines. You mentioned renewable energy in your beginning speech, which I appreciate. Uh, I was a leader in renewable energy, whether that's ethanol, biodiesel, the wind industry. In fact, we have a first-generation ethanol plant here in Atlantic. I wanted to ask you about your position on the renewable fuel standard. This uh, law that was signed in back in 2005 and expanded in 07 really allows the industry to thrive here in Iowa and in the Midwest. Do you support the renewable fuel standard? And then on wind energy, do you support policy? <laughs> and if we, if we want, we can just use one mic. Let's turn that down a little bit more, please. Thank you. Check. Yeah, I don't think this one's working, so I'll switch back. Okay. Okay. It still may be a little loud, but um, the, the answers to your two questions are yes and yes. I, I support the renewable fuel standard. Um, it's, it's, it's been a great lesson in how we can begin to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels in this country. I believe we've taken about 10% of the, the gasoline um, off, off of the market by what we are growing here. We're also freeing farmers from a dependence on commodity markets over which they have no control. Adding value to our communities and going to one of these ethanol facilities in West Burlington, Iowa, I saw young people who had decided to stay or move back to their communities for high paying, high skill, high value jobs that are doing something not just for the economy, but for the planet and for the generations that follow. You asked about wind energy. Yes, I support the production tax credit that ensures that we have the investment and capital necessary to continue to allow Iowa to be a leader in wind. I believe you generate more wind as a share of your total energy portfolio than any other state. Texas generates more wind in absolute terms than any other state. We can build on that to bring other states into the mix and also complement that with geothermal and solar. I live in El Paso, Texas, one of the sunniest cities in the United States of America. We're beginning to build out utility scale solar now, as well as putting it on the roofs of our homes as, as we just did in the O'Rourke household. So yes, um, we just proposed a $5 trillion over 10 year plan that includes investments in these technologies to make sure that by 2050, we have zero, net zero greenhouse gas emissions. Thanks for the questions, appreciate it. Yeah. Going back to the Medicare for All, the policies of the, the program that's in place that we're moving towards, does it change the status? Medicare pays very quickly, but I worked, uh, did Medicare insurance claims at a hospital in Ohio, 
and they had large amounts that the hospital had to write off and very small amount that was paid. Um, physicians don't want to take Medicare patients, not because it's a small payment, but because they're getting a very small amount. So I'm concerned that that's really going to harm our health care system. I agree we need change insurance for all. I totally agree with that. But I, I'm concerned. So is there a change in the payment amounts and process along with this? Yes, thank you. Thanks, thanks for the question. Um, when we were in Shenandoah earlier today, um, an EMS technician asked me a similar question, said, we're, we're not able to make it on, on reimbursements for Medicaid and Medicare anymore. So if part of your program, he warned me, is to reduce reimbursements to make this affordable, it's just not going to work. You're going to price me out of a job. You're going to price physician assistants. You're going to price doctors out of being able to provide care. And I agree with him and I agree with what you are saying. And, and I think that um, Iowa is actually an, a, a lesson in this. As Iowa has privatized Medicaid and reimbursement rates have come down, it's made it much harder for people to provide care and get reimbursed for it, and then subsequently for people to receive care. In Texas, over the course of one year, we had six rural hospitals closed down in a state that failed altogether to expand Medicaid. They literally just could not balance the books any longer. I talked to one of the directors of one of your rural hospitals in Iowa before I made this uh, most recent trip, and, and he said they're really just on the brink. It's, it's a day-to-day -day proposition for them right now. So in Iowa, under Medicaid today, I think we've got to up the reimbursement levels. And then under any plan, whether it's Medicare for America or Medicare for All, which is the, the plan that you brought up, reimbursements have to be commensurate with the value that's being provided, the ability to make a profit, and the ability to attract providers to communities that are otherwise going to be underserved. In El Paso, Texas, we have one of the worst doctor to patient ratios in the country. We're on level with Syria and Panama or, or third world countries. And in part, it is because of our reimbursement uh, rates compared to other cities in Texas. So yes, that must be standardized. And we must also provide inducements to bring people to, to rural communities to be able to practice. Thanks for asking the question.